It's so aggressive. God, you think he was from New York. Um, it's really, 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 really good to be here. Um, my life, like a lot of your lives, are pretty complex. My life is very complex, and there's a lot going on. I'm actually a very simple person. I love simplicity, and right now I just don't have simplicity. And um, I, just, I just remember um, when I first started in ministry, and I had to work two and three jobs uh, because we just couldn't make ends meet. But I was so dependent upon God and he performed so much miraculous provision, I, I can't begin to tell you because we'd be here till Yeshua returns. And that was a great, it was just a great time in my life where I was like completely desperate and completely dependent. You know, that's, that's what God likes. He likes when we're desperate and dependent. And the thing about it is, and don't take this the wrong way, you can't fake it. You know, you can't just say it. You can't just go, well, I'm desperate, and, and, and you're not. So um, going through what I went through a couple of months ago, it's, it's caused me to be desperate again. And it's really good in a lot of ways. Um, but keep it simple. Keep the gospel simple. You know, I, there's so many different theologies in this room. Every single one of you has a little different spin on what, you know, you think is important and what you think is less important and what God is saying to you and what God is saying to the world, every single person. And I've never wanted my theology to be yours. All I wanted you to do was connect with God. That's it. It's real simple. Um, and just try to put yourself in a position of dependency. And... Um, need, desperation. Uh, just to give you an update, you know, I don't want to belabor it, but I just, I just was in Florida visiting a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine for 40 years. Um, he's been a surgeon for 40 years. He's an excellent surgeon. Believe it or not, there's good ones and not so good ones. Just like there's good dry cleaners and not so good dry cleaners. <laughs> there's good believers and not so good believers in every realm and every walk. And, you know, we're great friends. He's a Jew from Brooklyn. I'm a Jew from the Bronx. We were raised the same way. We have the same culture. Uh, we get each other, you know, really well. And um, I was eating dinner with him at his house. And he looks over to me and he shakes his head and he goes, there's no way you should be here. You know, any one of those four things you had could have taken you out. But all four, there's no way. And for you to be sitting here, you know, and not, you know, laying in a bed, an invalid, and you to be sitting here, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know. You know, you wouldn't even know. And when he says those things, and other doctor friends might say those things, it's, you know, you're clapping, but I'm saying, okay, let's move on, because that's kind of scaring me. <laughs> you know, but, you know, the staph infection is in check, so... That's good. Um, I'll go back next week, and it looks like um, my kidneys are coming back, so I won't have to go to dialysis again. Um, I just had an ultrasound because they wanted to make sure that all these new grafts running through my body are connected well, and um, they're connected well, so that's a good thing. And, and last but not least, I had... Um, while I was in the hospital, I had this thing called arrhythmia. Um, and I don't know if you have, if, has anybody, you know, diagnosed with that or had it? I can't explain it. Like, not even the doctors. A lot of doctors, I was like, have you ever had it? And they're like, no. And I said, you don't know what it's like. All you've done, no offense, is read about it. But it's, you don't feel like yourself. You can't think straight. I couldn't process things. Uh, my blood pressure would be low, but my heart rate would be 130 beats per minute. Uh, you get tired. It's very weird. It's very strange. So I had to go last week to the hospital to have something called cardioversion, where they basically shock your heart, and they hope that it shocks back into what they call sinus rhythm, normal rhythm like a lot of you have. And I was laying there, and, uh, you know, once again, they... 
they come in and they put all the IVs in and, and you feel like mentally you're right back there. You know, you're in that dopey gown in the hospital bed. There's all these nurses around you trying to tell you what they're going to do and the doctors are there and then they put that bite block in and you feel like Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> and I just looked over to Bernadette and I said, listen, kid, if I don't make it, because, you know, they could shock you into paradise. I said, if I don't make it and you should meet somebody else, check their medical history. You don't want to go through this. <laughs> I'd even go back to their grandparents. And um, so, so they did it um, about nine days ago. And right afterward, I just felt normal. I just felt normal again. And it was such a good feeling. Not that my normal is normal, but just to be able to have some clarity of thought, just to be able to process things, just to feel okay, you know. And it's been, it's been holding they say usually if it reverts back, it reverts back within the first few days. So I have to see him next week. But if I see him next week and it stays, chances are I won't have arrhythmia anymore. So it's like, you know, God gave me these four big things. Like he's in control, right? You know, he, he permits or promotes. It's one or the other. Either he just allows something for his purposes. We don't know if our purposes or he promotes it. But it's one or the other. He's never sleeping. You know, nothing passes by his desk without him giving a stamp of approval, right? So I think all four of those things have been healed, if you will. But I think I was supposed to experience some things. And, and the best thing I could tell you is go back to that place of dependency. I'm no good for God when everything's going well. When I ask people how they're doing, believers, and they go, oh, really well. It makes me nervous for them. Because when things are going well, um, you tend to praise. You don't really worship, you praise. And you're very loud and very caught up in yourself and you're too blessed to be stressed. And you miss a lot of things that are going on that God wants to use you for. But when you're desperate and you're dependent, and in the morning you're showering and you really hit your knees in the shower and you cry out to God. It's quite beautiful. It's exactly what the world doesn't want you to do. It's the antithesis. A lot of you are probably successful in whatever you did and there's nothing wrong with that. But that's what the world teaches you. Make your way. Be dependent on you. And God says the exact opposite. So sometimes it's hard. It's, it's hard for you to, you, you, you got this secular job and you're trying to be successful and then you got God, you're trying to be dependent, you know. You don't want the surgeon to come in the room and say, look, I'm not really that good at this, but I'll give it my best shot. At least I'm humble. <laughs> but um, for me, I really never wanted to do this. I had no desire to do this. I just had a desire to serve God and tell everybody about my father. That's all I wanted. And at 65 years old, and after 35 years of this, that's still all I want. So I know I have a responsibility to try to share with you, hopefully, what God has shared with me. But you're going to make your own decisions, right? I mean, if the Holy Spirit can't get you to do stuff, surely I can't. And I would even try. I wouldn't even try. But... Um, just be careful when you feel like you have the corner on the market on holiness. You know, we're coming up on Passover. Uh, nobody, no, none of the Jewish people, none of the children of Israel were delivered because of their holiness. They were delivered because the angel of death saw the blood. And 3,400 years later, there's no difference. And hopefully you're, you're growing in the revelation of Golgotha and the crucifixion. Because it's, it's not about seeing Yeshua and going, I, I believe, I'm immersed in him, I'm going to heaven. It's, it's, it's not just that. That's almost like a, a byproduct. It's falling on your face and going, oh my God. 
the length you went to be with me forever. You won't find that love nowhere. No offense, I'm sure there's a lot of good marriages in here, but you will not find that love in your spouse. It's an otherworldly love. And hopefully you fall in love with that love more and more as you walk with the Lord. And hopefully you'll use that love not to hoard it, but to share it with others. Sounds like it makes sense? Wow, they bought it. There's people that really know the word of the Lord and they know of God, but sadly enough, they don't know him too well. What did I do with my glasses? Did I take them up here? Ah. Now I have another thing to deal with, forgetfulness, right? Getting old. (laughs) All right, if you do have your Bibles and you want to know what psalm I'm reading from, I'll be reading from Psalm 33. It starts out with an exclamation point. I don't feel like yelling, but just imagine I am. Rejoice in Adonai, you righteous. I just don't want my heart to get a rhythm. All right, I'll try it. Rejoice in Adonai, you righteous. That's how God wants it said. Praise is well suited to the upright, meaning for you to praise God, it, it fits you well. It's fitting. I mean, if you don't do it, who will? Give thanks. Such a major part of your walk. You, you have to stay thankful as much as you possibly can. Give thanks to Adonai with the, if you're reading from the complete Jewish, it's lyre. That's a, that's a stringed instrument. That's not give thanks with a bunch of people who don't tell the truth. <laughs> give thanks to Adonai with the lyre, the harp. Sing praises to him with a 10 stringed instrument. Sing to him a new song. This is a a very prophetic psalm. This is about Messiah returning and setting up his millennial reign on the earth as it is in heaven. That's, That's what we're banking on. We're not banking on going to heaven and being a vapor because we're not taking our body with us there. I don't know how much fun it's gonna be. It will be a perfect peace, but it won't be fun not interacting with people. He's gonna set up his kingdom. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's going to bring us back to Genesis 3, and the only thing that will be missing, well, a couple of things, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the serpent. Won't that be nice? Sing to him a new song, the song of the redeemed, Revelation 14, 3. Make music at your best among shouts of joy. For the word of Adonai is true. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And guess what? If that's not your theology, you're not a new covenant believer. I don't know what you are. For the word of Adonai is true. Yeshua is not just speaks truth, he embodies it. He is, because he's the word, made flesh. Stick with the script, don't confuse it. For all his work is trustworthy. Who can you say that about? He loves righteousness. He loves rightness and justice. We can't stand injustice, right? It's driving us crazy today. Well, make sure you don't join the pack and you stay just. The earth is full of the grace. Don't forget that. I see a lot of people that come into the Messianic movement and they lean so hard on truth. They're out of balance. Like they're so, so hard on truth and so weak on grace. You're going to need that grace. I wouldn't be too weak on it. Build up your account. 
By the word of Adonai, the heavens were made. Imagine. All was made by him, just by speaking. And the whole host by breath from his mouth, he collects the seawaters together in a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. I love the beach. It's my favorite place to go. I love watching the waves bow at their maker's feet. And they come just so far and God says, that's it. Let all the earth fear Adonai, something that is desperately missing today in the faith. Let all living in the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and there it was. Voila. He commanded, there it stood. Imagine. I mean, people have all these... Uh, these items on their bucket list, you know. Some people would love to climb Everest. All God did was go, Everest. I don't know, he brings to nothing the plans of the nations. Don't, don't worry. Pray for people who are being hurt and pray. But those wars, what, what are you worried about? Even I just found out there's people talking about this eclipse. What? So it's an eclipse. What, 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 what does that mean, Rabbi? It means nothing to me. I'm still going to share the gospel. Does, does it mean we're in the last days? We were in the last days when Yeshua left. That's what the Bible says. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm leading people to the Lord. I'm going to baptize somebody today. What about the earthquake in New York? What about it? What, I'm not interested. This, I'm interested in only one fault line, the one on the Mount of Olives where it's going to split when Yeshua stands there. That's the only earthquake I care about. People are crazy. I mean, some of you are crazy. <laughs> Studying and coming up with theories that God is not anointing a blessing. I mean, you have that much time on your hands. See, you made the baby cry because you. <laughs> he foils the plans of the peoples. You, have, you, you don't have power. The only power you have comes from him. He's the power of, you're just the power E. The lamp has no power, has to be plugged in the socket. That's how it shines its light. The power's in the wall somewhere. I still don't understand electricity, but it's sitting there somewhere. But the council of Adonai stands forever. His heart's plans are for all generations. How blessed is the nation whose God is Adonai, the people he chose as his heritage. Rabbi, America's going in a bad way. Don't mean you got to follow. How did Daniel do? He was in a lot worse place in America. We're getting there, but it wasn't exactly Babylon. We're not there yet. But it didn't stop him from being steadfast and prayerful and facing Jerusalem. God's not going to judge you based on what nation you live in. I don't know, he looks out from heaven. Imagine that. The Chronicles say that God's eyes move to and fro the earth. What's he looking for? It says he's looking for a heart that's completely, not part-time. Completely his. His on, on vacation. His when you're at synagogue. His when you're at Walmart. Don't turn on and off your light. I don't know, he looks out from heaven. What are you looking for? He sees every human being, of course. He's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's God. From the place where he lives, he watches everyone living on earth. He who fashioned the hearts of them all and understands all they do, he knows our thoughts are intense better than we do. 
A king is not saved by the size of his army. A strong man not delivered by his great strength. A rich man not delivered by his wealth. You can go on and on and on. To rely on a horse for safety is vain. Nor does its great power assure escape. When will we learn that the finest cavalry can't bring victory? But Adonai's eyes watch over those who fear him. God, I want, I want the Lord to, to watch over me. We fear him. I want him to watch over me more. Fear him more. Over those who wait for his grace. Wait for his grace. Not wait for his truth. Listen, if there's no grace and there's only truth, we're all done. Every single solitary one of us, even the ones that think they're walking in truth. It gets so crazy. So many splinter groups. One little thing could cause division. I, I never played that game. I never fell prey to that. The messianic movement that I'm part of doesn't. We're all a bunch of Jews. Every single rabbi in the MJ was born Jewish, raised Jewish. They met Messiah supernaturally. They fell in love with him, and they never thought it was us and them, meaning the church. It was us. I got great friends who are pastors who I love dearly, and they've done incredible work for the Lord. I'd like to see some of us lamos who just do feasts and food tell them they're off. crazy I mean guys you might not like this and you know I'm so transparent it's pathetic but as a Jewish person who believes in Jesus I have to be identifiable that's what Jeremiah says I have to be you if you're Gentile how are you going to be identifiable as a Jew when you're not I know that might bother you but that's what the Bible says I have to be identifiable. And how am I identifiable? Pretty much by the food I eat and the feast I observe. In other words, when I went to the rendezvous, the oldest barbecue place in Memphis, and I just said to this waiter who's there 40 years, excuse me, do you have any vegetarian beans, beans without pork? The owner came out right away and said, you're Jewish, right? You follow? And it says I have to be identifiable to let other Jews know in the world you can believe in Jesus as your Messiah and you don't have to give up your identity because Judaism isn't the problem, sin is. The church has a call to provoke to jealousy and you do that by loving the Jewish people, not by putting on a kippah. You put on a kippah, they think you're out of your mind. You think, no, I'm witnessing to them. Yes, you're witnessing that you're out of your mind. They're my people, I know them well. I was raised 60 years as a Jew, still am. I'm trying to help you, but you love them. You care about them. You say thank you for if it wasn't for your people holding on to the word of God and birthing Yeshua, I wouldn't have salvation. That will get to them. So if you're a member of the church and you worship on Sunday, it's fine, don't get caught up with that. You got a pork roast? Don't think you're going to catch something if you go over somebody's house and it's cra you're crazy. You're missing the boat. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm trying to help you. Really, I really am. From, from just turning people off, the saved, the lost. But if you feel like this is the way you want to live in a messianic lifestyle because you feel like your Lord and Savior did these things, as a Jewish person, and you then come along, but just don't be weird about it. And don't make that the focal point of your faith. Make Yeshua the focal point of your faith and make evangelism the focal point of your faith. And I'm saying this not as a wannabe, you know? I'm saying this because it's dangerous.
We are waiting for Adonai, yes? We're waiting for Adonai. I'm waiting. My, my soul can never be completely happy until that eastern sky opens up. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, I'm happy about a lot of things. I'm happy to be here. But I can't be completely happy till Messiah returns. That's the longing of my soul. We are waiting for Adonai. And you know why? Because he is our help and our shield. For in him, that's what's going to save you, man, being in him. Don't dare sit down with the Lord when it's time and talk to him about your works of righteousness. If you do, make sure I'm not anywhere near you. For in him our hearts rejoice because we trust in his holy name. He's holy. His holiness covers us by the grace of God. And it doesn't mean I'm not telling you, you know, let your flesh have its fling. But I'm saying if you really love the Lord, you would want to do things that please him. It wouldn't be forced. Well, I got to. Wearing tzitzits, not eating pork, but seeing somebody in need and driving right by him. Those are the works we should be doing. May your mercy, I don't know, what a beautiful way to end the psalm. May your mercy, may your tender loving kindness, may your chesed, I don't know, be over us. I pray that for us today. And you know why, Lord? because we put our hope in you. And our hope isn't like worldly hope, like, oh, I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow because we have that picnic. You know what hope is in the faith? It's a joyful expectancy. When we say we hope in the Lord, it's not like, I, you know, I, it'd be nice if he does come through. No, we know he's going to. We're absolutely positively convinced. And I know life is overwhelming today. Our society is just a freak show. The bureaucracy is out of control. The aggravation, it's a lot of you are stressed out of your mind. It's not because your faith stinks. It's because this world that you have to contend with is just relentless. So the last thing you need is for me to tell you another thing to do, another book to read. So today, Try to bask in his mercy. Breathe. Don't think about what you have to do later. Don't think about what's going on tonight. Try not to even think about some problems you have to deal with. Take advantage of God's Shabbat. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. And take all the broken pieces of your heart and turn into something whole and beautiful. Sound good? Yes. Let's make the most of this little bit of time we have together. It's a beautiful dynamic, you know? Each one of you came in with some component, some element of the Holy Spirit. And we brought all that together under one roof. And then God's gonna meet us with even a greater dimension of the Holy Spirit. So don't worry about what you need. You don't have to tell him. I think he knows. Just worship him. Because it's never a one-way street with God. No. You worship him and watch the blessing you get. Let go and worship him. Don't question him. Nobody's going to love you like him. Nobody's plan is better than his. You can't trust anybody the way you can trust him. Let it go today. Let it go. Heavenly Father, thanks. 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 Thanks a lot.
Thanks for who you are. Thanks for what you do. Thank you that you're so active and in a lot of ways we're so clueless. I think there's a lot of really decent people in here today, Father. And uh, there's, there's a lot going on in their lives, very stressful. Just minister to all of us and give us peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, guys.